Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to my Best of Designers series. Today we're taking a look at Ted Osbach. Now, almost all of Ted's games have been printed through his own company, Bezier Games. Ted was uh, involved with gaming very heavily back in the day. Essentially, he was just a fan of games. Uh, he eventually started, uh, he wrote about games a bit, and then he started a comic, a webcomic about board games. In fact, it started out basically by being little meeples that were like talking to each other from Carcassonne. And it went on for several years, actually. He had a book collected of them, but he started publishing his own games. That kind of overlapped the comics, and then he began to publish more and more games. His biggest breakthrough, probably, if I'm guessing where his company really kind of became just like, hey, this is a company I'm publishing some of my games through, to, wow, this is a company that people notice, was when he redid Werewolf. Now, Werewolf has been done many, many, many times, um, but Ted took Werewolf, called it Ultimate Werewolf, and made many, many different characters, a good version. In fact, most of the time when I see people playing Werewolf, this is the version that they use. And this is something Ted does often, is he'll take a game that someone else has done and, and, and really kind of add a whole lot of stuff to it. And we'll talk a bit about that in a moment as we go through what I think are his 10 best designs. So number 10, I'm gonna put in here One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Actually, I think One Night Ultimate Werewolf is an incredible game and is one of my favorite games, would be higher on the list based on that. But the fact is, is that One Night Werewolf already existed. He just added the ultimate and added a whole lot of stuff. Is the stuff he added good and excellent? For sure. And he's done this with several other games like America and things like that. Um, these are, are uh, mutant, uh, mutant Meeples where he took uh, uh, basically ricochet robots. I, I like that sort of thing a lot. Uh, but So I'm putting One Night Ultimate Werewolf to kind of hold the place here that Ted is an excellent developer and has developed many games. But let's go back to games now that, starting with number nine, that are basically his design. Number nine is You Suck. Well, not you, but You Suck is a uh, trick-taking game uh, where the uh, there's ticks and everything. So that's the whole ha-ha-ha, You Suck. It's kind of a it's more of a pleasant trick-taking game. It's not, you can't take it too seriously. You're just playing the cards, kind of just going with the flow in it. Number eight is Ticked Off. <laughs> I think Ted likes these uh, names. Um, Ticked Off is a game in which you are picking a category and you're basically guessing how many things you can say in that specific category. And then a second category is revealed. And so there's a lot of party games that kind of do this thing. This one does it, I think, better than most because you're involved in every round, no matter if you think you'll get the most or not. Number seven is Seismic. Seismic is, I think, the first game of his. No, it's the second game of his I played. Seismic feels kind of like Carcassonne with earthquakes. And as you're placing tiles and trying to control things, and earthquakes are going to happen, but the tiles aren't square. Um, it's, it's kind of an interesting layout. It was an interesting game. I don't know that I would play it today, but it certainly was something that felt different when I first played it. Number six is Colony. Now, Colony kind of came and went. Colony is a really nice looking game. And essentially, Colony is you're going to buy cards. You're going to be rolling dice and using the, what you've rolled to buy cards. And then those cards are going to give you benefits to buy more cards. I didn't think the game was amazing. Um, I thought it was just decent. But a lot of people have liked this game. And it plays very easily and very well. And it also has a really great graphic design to it. Number five is Beer and Pretzels. This is a game that's really a simple concept. You are throwing coasters at a table. The coasters, I think, are the pretzels, and you're trying to get them close to beer. Um, back in the day, uh, when this game came out, most of the games that we today call fillers were called Beer and Pretzel games. Some people still do, because uh, they're the kind of game that you just play while you're drinking beer and eating pretzels, I guess. Um, so this is one of that style of games. And it's just, you're throwing it, you know, took the took the name of the game and we're going to call it that. But I like dexterity games. And while throwing cards could be a pain, throwing round coasters works better. Number four is One Night Revolution. Now, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, like I said at the beginning, was something that he took and expanded upon. One Night Revolution took the characters and stuff from uh, the uh, uh, indie boards and cards. And their world where they had coup and things and games like that took those characters and put them in a way. And One Night Ultimate Revolution or One Night Revolution, I think is better than One Night Ultimate Werewolf because in this game, you're doing something at night and it's really kind of a thinky little way to figure out who's doing what at different times. I really enjoy this one a lot. Number three 
is Palace of Mad King Ludwig. Now this was, I wonder if this one has had its sales problematic because people think it's an expansion for the castles of Mad King Ludwig. It's not. It's the palace of Mad King Ludwig. And in this game, you are building a palace together. And you're placing these rooms down. You have lots of different options. The game comes with a nice board that each player has. And you're sitting there going, okay, I'm going to take tiles. I'm going to try to score. Um, and there's you have to make some tough decisions as the game goes by. But it's also fun just to sit there and watch this castle build itself with a moat coming around the outside of it. It's visually an interesting game. There's a It's a little busy at points, but it's a really cool idea of building this big palace and putting the rooms together. Number two is The Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I like this one better. I think it's a very solid game in which each person is building a castle. Now, the theme initially drew me into this game because I like the idea of building a castle. Uh, but this also has a really cool mechanism at the beginning where you're putting rooms that players can put into their castles and putting a price on each one and then pay, players will pay you that price. So if you there's one tile that you really want, you get to buy after everyone else has bought so you might make it very expensive, but then you have to pay a lot to get it. You might make it cheap, but then someone else might buy it. That's a neat concept. I like that. But then, of course, it comes down to building the castle, which I really enjoy. And number one, easily head and shoulders above the rest, easily Ted's best game, and that's Suburbia. Suburbia is probably, I'm thinking, definitely the best city building board game out there. There's a lot of them. It's a very popular theme. But in Suburbia, you are... Uh, taking these tiles and, and buying them from a line of tiles that come down and putting them in your part of the city. You're all in the same city to some degree. And you put these tiles in and as you put a tile in, it might affect someone else. I open a restaurant that might affect your restaurant that you already have. I open an airport. Both our airports are going to benefit from that. And this really cool idea of getting income and also trying to get people just to come to your city, it goes together in a very solid, wonderful game. Highly recommend Suburbia, especially the first expansion added even more cool things, a beach and an airbase, and I, I just really like this game a lot, Suburbia. So those are my favorite games from Ted Osbach. What do you think? What are your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Best of Designers, Ted Osbach.